<laughs> For more on the midterm results so far and what they mean, we're joined now by someone who knows a thing or two about running for office. Senator Amy Klobuchar of Minnesota joins us. Good to see you, Senator. You know, the Democrats did Thank much better you. than expected last night. Thank you. We're very glad you got up early with us because I know I'll bet it was a long night for you, too. But the Democrats yeah, did much sleep, better. I wanted to wear her sunglasses as well. <laughs> That's what I was thinking I during her entire report. But continue. On. I know. Senator, we can all relate to that. We really can. But listen, the Democrats did much better than expected last night. What, if anything, surprised you about the showing? Well, a number of things. So many Republicans and pundits were out there predicting this red tide. And let's just say those predictions did not age well. Uh, first thing is we won a number of governor's races, as you have just noted, across the country, including in states like Minnesota and Michigan, including a red, red state like Kansas, uh, where Governor Kelly was reelected. Then you go to the House of Representatives, uh, since 1974, the average loss of House seats in a midterm has been 2023. 20, and so we mm -hmm. have literally uh, defied the tides of history. Um, no matter what happens, uh, we know it's going to be incredibly close in the House with people like but, Abigail Spanberger winning our seat. Finally, the yeah, Senate that was a big predicted win. this, our incumbents doing incredibly well and ahead, and Fetterman winning in Pennsylvania. But privately, many Democrats were worried. You weren't concerned last night going into the races? I know the Republicans oh, were saying totally that, but relaxed, privately. Gail. You were? No. Okay. <laughs> Everyone was concerned. Everyone was concerned because of all the money uh, that had been spent against our candidates, uh, the angry, angry uh, types mm. of ads that we saw on TV. And what I think is amazing about the voters, number one, they showed up in big numbers. Many of the election deniers lost. The voters have understood that democracy is on the ballot. Number two, I think we were pushed at for pushing on the issue of reproductive rights. There are a lot of criticisms, but for a number of voters, that mattered. They showed up at the polls because of the outrageous decision by the Supreme Court. Third thing is inflation costs. Our candidates have pragmatic answers of bringing costs down for families, including taking on the pharma companies. And I think the people of this country understood more than the pollsters or the pundits thought uh, that Democrats have been doing a whole lot to help and that, in fact, the Republicans didn't really have yeah. a plan and they were playing politics with it uh, with a right. problem that is a worldwide inflation problem. Yeah, Senator, you mentioned those ads, and as you know, messaging does matter. Exit polls show voters trust Republicans more than Democrats on issues like crime and economy. What can Democrats do to change that moving forward? Great question. I think, number one, uh, as the House recently did, putting forward plans uh, to go after crime, and that includes funding the police, uh, right before uh, we broke uh, the Congress uh, to come back home, there was a major vote in the House on funding the police. I lead the bill on funding community uh, police officers with Lisa Murkowski of Alaska. I think that's going to be really important going forward, uh, that we continue uh, to make that clear and that we actually help to solve this problem. And there's many solutions, including mental health, including uh, recruiting police officers, um, that fentanyl, many things that we have to deal with. The second thing is, of course, on inflation. To me, that means continuing this work on workforce training, on the supply chain disruptions, on bringing the shipping costs down, on doing more when it comes to pharmaceutical costs and housing and child care, instead of focusing on enshrining tax cuts for the wealthy, which was basically the Republican plan, as well as protecting so, right. so, Senator Social Security and Medicare. Go ahead. So, Senator, it's Vlad. Um, let me just ask you about something that you were critical of throughout this election cycle. You were critical of the party strategy of spending millions of dollars supporting election deniers in Republican primaries because they thought it, they would be easier to win in general elections. Um, it seems to have worked, but I don't know. Do you think it's a good strategy going forward? Again, that'll all be analyzed um, after we're not after three hours sleep here of what happened. I think you see this going on on both sides. No, I don't like it. Um, I believe in our democracy. Um, but all of this can continue and will continue to happen on both sides unless we have some kind of campaign finance reform in place. And to me, that means 
the Freedom to Vote Act. It means a constitutional amendment to overturn Citizens United. The angry, yeah. ugly ads coming from untold sources of money that no one can figure out, shadow contributions. That's got to end. It's really bad for our democracy. Yeah. Senator Klobuchar, just like many of us here at CBS, you make three hours of sleep look good. Thank you for joining <laughs> us. We appreciate you. I'm going to remember <laughs> that. Give me through my day. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome.